because you've been, I don't know how many people were here um, a couple months ago when we talked about the school thing. I see some familiar faces, some I, I don't see. But So what I want to talk about today, you know, we have two presentations. I want to make my presentation and Rob can talk about my presentation. And what I'm talking about is um, there's a new uh, program that the administration, the mayor and the city council are going to be proposing. And what it is, it's going to require millions of more taxpayer dollars to uh, stop funding uh, uh, our health care retirement fund for, for city workers for their free lifetime health care. And I want to talk to you about that because there hasn't been, been a lot of uh, information put out. There was a, a, a meeting about a month ago, and a, a consultant came in, and they, they, you know, they limited how much time we could talk and things like that. So I wanted to go over some of the um, uh, additional um, information. So... So, you know, the first thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, what we're facing soon in the future. We have new city and school spending that's going to really, in my opinion, skyrocket your, your property taxes. Um, there's a school budget hearing taking place right now. Schools are asking for $10.5 million more. Maximum tax increase gets us $8.5 million. Now, hopefully they're going to cut that down. But, you know, what are some of the other things that are going on in the city right now? Right? And Rob's going to talk about this. $350 million in borrowing to build new schools, right? Going to use huge tax increases to do something like that. And that's what we're talking about. And it's going to be between 13 and $19 million a year for 20 years. Rob's going to give a lot more information we can on that. That was based around how long ago were those numbers? About a year old? Mm -hmm. uh, those numbers were from uh, March of 2022. Yeah, and, and what's happened and what did the Fed do today, right? They raised interest rates again, right? Yep. So we don't even know, you know, what those numbers are going to be right now. And to try to get information from the city is almost impossible. Uh, water and sewer infrastructure, right? We had a major sewer break, right? Last year, <clears throat> sewer authority went out. They thought it was going to cost $5 million to fix it. Guess what? It's $15 million. <laughs> The city council had to do an emergency bond approval of $30 million for the sewer authority. What do you think is going to happen with your rates? Right? So we're talking about all these different things that are starting to go on in the city. <clears throat> what I want to talk about now is eight years ago, the city's been talking about funding this retirement, retiree health care trust fund for eight years now. They had a former consultant that came in. His name was Ray, Raymond Cerrone of Jefferson Solution on June 8, 2015. He came and he had a presentation before the city council. And I cut some excerpts from, from that. He was having a conversation with Councilman Steve Marola. And I'm gonna play that for you for a second, then we can come back and I can, um, you know, we can uh, talk a little bit about what he was trying to tell the city. Now, hopefully, you're gonna be able to hear this. At some point in time, there's gonna be a point where we can't afford to pay our debts. And there's gonna, because we can't generate enough income, if we haven't already reached it now, um, but how do we figure out when that breaking point is with regard to expenses and debts and income? You know, there's only so much you can do to raise revenue and take out of your savings account. And, uh, and then at some point in time, everybody's going to realize, oh, no, we should have done something. We could help you do projections and kind of come up with a solvency formula for you. That's not a problem. Um, I would also think that the folks in your business office are capable of doing that as well. Have you hit that point? When you have a $24 million cost and you can only pay $7 million, I think your answer is there, honestly. I think, so we're, we're, I think we're there. I think we've been there for a long time. If I was running this business, and, and I, don't, I don't know what you do, but if you were running a, you know, a business in the private sector, I'm an attorney and I run my own business. Do you give your employee close employment health no. insurance? Exactly. So, I mean, if I was running, if this was my business model, I would run away from it. That, um, you know, the way these benefits are growing, and you're saying you have a 4% threshold, right? It's only a matter of time before that's claiming other resources that you need in other places. Um, so there is a way to calculate uh, at some point. The breaking point? Yeah, the breaking point, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, I think it's, in my opinion, it's simple math. I mean, you've got a 4% growth. I mean, you factor in what you might come into the economy, what might go out. I mean, 
a lot of that four percent is all, and you know, when you look at it, it's all based on good days, not bad days. So you know, factor in the ups and downs of the economy and the revenue stream. It's just simple math. Thank you. So this consultant came back eight years ago and said the city's at a breaking point. Now let's break down a couple of things that he said. When he's talking about four percent growth, what he's talking about is four percent of the tax levy is a maximum tax increase. That gets you eight point five million dollars. Do we want to have a maximum tax increase every year? No, right? And the other interesting thing that he said, if you pull, he said that we could easily calculate the breaking point. He could have done it. No one asked him to do it. But he said the city business department can do it, right? Why do you think the city won't do that? No, I think they're competent. The thing but is, they don't, they, don't want they don't want you to know, to know. we're at the breaking point. Absolutely. Yeah. They don't want you to know that. You know, Councilman Ed Lasso has been asking for a five year forecast for a, a long time now from the finance director. They won't do it. They say they can't do it. They can do it. They don't want to do it because. If they came out with something like this, it would probably be all over the headlines and the papers. People would be stoning City Hall. So you know what they do? They just lead you. Hey, we can build schools for $350 million, right? That's one of the big things that they talked about, right? That's one of them. So back then, there was two options that we can go with, right, to deal with the escalating retiree costs. One of them was renegotiate the benefits to reduce the uh, liabilities require retirees to pay their fair share for the benefits. And, and Mr. Cerrone back then actually produced a report of 10 things the city can do to cut the costs. Some of them was eliminate the benefit for future retirees. And he had a boatload of other things. You know, we have a cap on prescription drugs. I'm gonna talk about it for a second. It's $600 cap per year for family on prescription drugs, cost them $5 million a year. They ignored all that. They didn't do anything. You know what they did? Second plan, they require you, the tax base, to keep paying for the increase in cost for free lifetime health care. And the amount of money is going up to a point where we pay $13 million a year now for retired health care. School time pays half a million. Do you know why? Anybody know why it's such a, a big disparity between the city side and the school side? Anybody? Yeah. City is the school department. It's only the teacher gets it, and they only get it to age 65. Yeah. They also have to do a copay when they start receiving it. Yep. Whereas in the city, they get lifetime health care for life. For life. 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 There's no copay. It's absolutely right. So at 65, they go on Medicare and still pump their off the system. Not over here. So we've took path number two. We don't want to rock the boat, our city officials. <clears throat> and let's talk about, like, I just want to digress a little bit before I get into more of this. But people, I don't know if people really understand what are the benefits. What do we mean by free lifetime health care? Retirees receive Blue Cross Blue Shield for husband and wife prior to age 65 years of age, 100% paid by city. So I can't get into all this stuff. I don't want to make generalized statements, but some people can retire at 50 years old, some can retire at 55. But for, until that point, until they hit 65 years of age, you, the taxpayers, are paying 100% of the cost. And I don't know if anybody heard about the controversy with a former councilman getting you know, retirement health care. It's about 23,000 people were aghast. 23,000, that's a lot of money. Well, we're doing that for every single retired person. And I did some statistics on this. We have 900 and something people retired. We have more people retired than active employees getting health care. You know? and, and the fact of the matter is, out of the 900 or so that's retired, more than 50% are, are before the age of 65. So that's why we're paying $13 million a year, because we're paying a full boat. The day an employee retires in City of Warwick, I think they're paying about a 20% now. The day they go, zero, free. You know, so that's some of the stuff that we're talking about. Well, what else? When they hit 65, they do go on Medicare. We, the taxpayers, pay 100% of that cost, of the Medicaid cost. And then the other thing that we do is we provide uh, a Blue Cross supplemental plan. So whatever Medicare doesn't cover, they have another plan that covers what, Medi what, the, what the Medicare plan doesn't. So we're paying a supplemental, free, no co-pays, <clears throat> prescription drugs, capped at $600. My parents are 90, 91 years old. 
They have some scripts that in a month or two months could cost more than 600. These are cap. We have people that are working other jobs because you know they're still young enough that they can get other jobs where they could get health care from the other employer. But we're still paying 100% of the cost. And this $600 cap on prescription drugs cost me $5 million a year. Former Mayor Avedishian gave that benefit away. He never bothered to ask how much is this going to cost in the future. So I just want you guys to understand, you know, what are we talking about when we talk about these lifetime health care benefits? And our unfunded health care liabilities is $400 million. I mean, that's how much these benefits are going to cost us going into the future. So what the city wants to do now is come up with a fund, so we got to put millions and millions of more dollars to create a health care trust fund. Wait, and, is, there, is there like a line item in the budget like we do in vehicles where every year we're about money? Well, that's, that. what, that's what they're planning to do. So they, so I mean, you, you probably might have heard the term, it's called other policy <coughs> benefits, it's called OPEP. So now what the city wants to do is they want to stop funding this trust fund. And basically they've drawn a line and say, we're not going to make any changes to the benefits. We're not going to ask for co-pays. No, the, the taxpayers in the city of Warwick are going to have to continue paying this cost at the expense of everything else in the city, right? What's going on in the city in the last 10 years or so since Mr. Cerrone said stuff? Our roads are falling apart. Our schools are falling apart. We've got pipes exploding in the streets, right? We have no money to do anything anymore because all the money is going towards benefits like this. And, and this is what their plan is going to be for. And Rob was there, I was there, and we testified against this one, and I'm going to talk a couple seconds. But they want us to put $68 million more million a year into this trust fund in the next nine years. That's an average of... $7.5 million a year. $7.5 million a year. What did I just say a few minutes ago? Maximum tax increase is 8.5. We need 10 for this. We're almost going to average a maximum tax increase just to fund this. And, and the way they're going to do it, it's going to be slow. Like the average is 7.5. In, in the beginning, it's going to be lower amounts. Then it's going to escalate. By the 10th, year, the 9th year, you're talking 10 million. Can we afford to do a maximum tax increase just for this when we want to build new two, two new high schools and do everything else we need in the city? We can't. Bob, did they look at any other options the city council when they instituted this? No, the city council didn't look at any other options. I'm kind of glad you asked that question. They, what they did is they brought in one consultant. It's the consultant that works on the, the city's pension plans. His name is Joseph Newton. And so what he did is he went back and he made a recommendation on how can we fund, you know, this health care trust fund. He didn't ask anybody else about it. And what his plan was to do this. <clears throat> We're going to take $5 million from the city health care surplus fund. We've actually accumulated a surplus of $5 million on a health care fund. And I think they said partially because of COVID, people weren't going to the doctors and things like that. So it's good, you know, we have a surplus. <clears throat> Why is a surplus good? If you have an emergency, you can tap into the surplus and you could use it, right? What they want to do is take every last dollar inside that surplus and put it into this fund. Once you do that, you cannot take that out. It's like, a, it's almost like an irrevocable trust. You can't take that money out. So what's going to happen if we take every last dollar from our surplus and we have a bad year? Who's going to pay for it? Taxpayers. Yeah. Taxpayers, right? You're going to pay for it. Is, is that really a smart move to do that? I don't think so. But I mean, by the way, Bob, just to, just to throw in, when that meeting took place and I got up and I questioned him about this $68 million, he said, well, that $68 million over the nine years, that's seven, would you agree at $7.5 million a year that would be on average? He said, yes. I said, how much can the city raise in the maximum tax increase? He said, I have no idea. That's not my job. Yeah, you didn't know. You can see that. It's on the March 20th city council meeting. Go to YouTube. Yeah. Go to like a one hour mock. I could send you all the link. I was going to play it tonight. He could not answer any questions. And what, what they did was when they had the four pension plans and uh, a municipal police one, five, police one, fire one, Police two, five two, and um, what was the other one, Bob? The four of them. Municipal. And municipal, right? So police one, fire one, this is it's underfunded by three hundred million dollars. So they took that out, and they didn't use it in the analysis. And they said, well, if we look, at, if we take that out, we're eighty percent funded, seventy nine percent funded, and the state says 
that if your 80% funded your health, if you take that out, but when you put that in, you're 60% funded, which the state says is catastrophic. But the other thing that they didn't put in was the unfunded liabilities from the health care. When you add the unfunded liabilities to the health care, and now you run a percentage of, of solvency, we're in the 20% bracket of our unfunded liabilities. Yeah, and I think it was like 20, and, and 25 I, 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 I touch on that a little bit later. I'm going to actually touch on that. So the other thing that he wants to do is he wants to reduce the pension contributions by $5 million. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a second. I want to kind of skip over that because I have a whole slide that talk about that. And then we just talked about we, we're going to be asked on top of that $10 million, we're going to put $68 million more in to do that. And like I said, a maximum tax increase is produces you know $8.5 million. So let's talk about why he wants, you know, the, the $5 million that he wants us to take out of the pension funds to put into this trust fund and why I'm saying it's questionable. So this is what Rob was just talking about. When you take a look at this, this is the all the uh, the pension funds, and, and it's called the um, you know how how well are we funded? So like if I owe you a hundred dollars and I have a hundred dollars in the bank, I, I'm I'm one hundred percent covering my debt. So last year at this time, he's talking about the three city open plans. We're funded at eighty one percent. Now remember, this is last year. What's going on in the stock market right now? Right, the stock market has been going down. And he's basically saying, this is from his slides, his recommendation. 80% is considered healthy, although funding should target 100. We're probably below that now based on what's been going on in the stock market this year. So how could he in one breath say that we're going to take $5 million out of our pension funds when we're basically, he's saying that we should target 100. And we're probably not even considered healthy right now. And like I said, it doesn't even factor in what Rob was saying. That you know we have a police fire one that's uh, you know twenty four percent, so it doesn't make sense. That's why it's very questionable to be doing that. And there's another point that we have to look at. Warwick assumes a six point nine percent rate of return on his, in his investments. How many people have like mutual funds, a four hundred one k, or whatever in the audience? Most people probably do, right? Mm -hmm. So when you talk to maybe like an investment advisor and they want to say, okay, you know, what do you need to you know, when you retire, how much money are you gonna need? And they wanna put you in a portfolio and they say, okay, your portfolio needs to grow by so many percent per year, and when you retire, you're gonna have enough money, right, to be able to live and pay your bills. Well, the city has a 6.9%, that means we need to make a 6.9% rate of return on all of our investments in our pension fund. We just, I just got this information from the city's uh, financial analysts. These are the people that control all the funds. We haven't hit that mark in 25 years. We haven't got 6.9 percent, 29. So, so the question is, what does that mean when you don't hit that mark? What that means is you're not earning enough interest and enough money <coughs> in your accounts to pay all these future liabilities. So what does that mean? It means you, the taxpayers, have to make up for that. You're going to have to put more money in to the fund, right? So you get it. So we, they want to take five million dollars. Why take five million dollars out? Maybe you should be using that money and keep it in there and try to build up the pension funds. The city officials act like we've solved the problems with our pensions. We haven't. Now they want to go on to health care. You haven't even solved this problem. And this is the other thing. Mr. Newton doesn't even know our asset allocation. He doesn't talk to the investment people. You know, so he makes these assumptions and things like that, and he doesn't talk to anybody else that's actually investing the money. I think you should mention that Newton has admitted that more than a few times he's appeared before the city council. And he says, I don't talk to those people. Yeah, he, he, he has no that. idea. He has no idea. That. So what I try, what I actually tried to do then is, I'm kind of like the geek, I guess, when I look at this stuff. The, the, the city audit report just came out. And our auditors are uh, Clifton, uh, Lawson, and, Al, uh, and Allen. And, and what they basically did is they did a report on our asset allocation, and they basically said, we're not going to meet the 6.9%. And this is right from their document. This is the asset allocation. We have fixed income, large, small, international, right? So that's 100%. They got these models and things that they run. They ran this model through, and they said, our asset allocation is long-term 4.5%. We're supposed to get 6.9%. If this holds true, we're going to have to put more money as tax 
taxpayers in this because we're not meeting our rate of return. We're not generating enough money for investments. So you have the city auditors that look at all this stuff are saying we got 4.5, Newton saying we should be getting 6.9, and then Newton still says we should take $5 million out of the pension fund. And Bob, that's an official city document. That's, there, right? official that's city. not this your document, right? See, everything I'm saying here, this isn't my stuff. I'm just, I just put all the pieces of the puzzle together for you. I doubt anybody in the city, from the mayor on down to the finance chair and the council president, even looked at this thing. And they should. This thing is not properly being vetted. It's being rushed through, and I'm kind of getting off. But soon, what they're trying to do, their strategy is... They're going to be putting new ordinances, new laws in the city, so they can start enacting this plan. They had an hour and a half of testimony from Mr. Newton, and that was it. And people like me and Rob and other people were totally shut down. And we could, the reason I'm doing this, I want this to get out, and maybe somebody in the city will look at this and see it and say, maybe we need to take a time out and look at some other experts or what's going on. And we just talked about what's the, what's the risk of reducing the five million? It's just like the same risk of taking the five million out of your, your uh, surplus for your health care. If these things don't pan out, you just took all that money away. Now we as taxpayers are going to have to pay more annual taxes just to fund this stuff on top of everything else we're doing. So we're not ready to do something like that. And this is an interesting thing that I'm saying. Our work political leaders, they only want to listen to the consultants that support what they want to do. Right? I just played a clip from the guy eight years ago. <clears throat> I doubt anybody in this city even knows that guy exists. Right? So eight years ago, we talked about Ray Cerrone. He basically said that we're on a breaking point. The city's on a breaking point. No one's done anything. We just keep prodding along, prodding along. You know, we, we got bailed out because of opera money. I don't know if you guys understand that. The federal government gave the city millions and millions of dollars because of COVID. Our budget is balanced on that one-time money. We've got a huge structural deficit in our budget right now. We've got to make that up. You don't use one-time money for reoccurring <coughs> expenses. I don't think if you try to do that in your family budget, you wouldn't do that. So any fiscally responsible people don't do things like that. And he said, you know, Warren, if this was his business, he would he would uh, run away from it. He recommended 10 things to do to make changes. They were all ignored. All his recommendations were ignored. Now, Let's contrast that Mr. Cerrone's statements to Mr. Newton. Mr. Newton's been a city consultant for over a decade. And he had, there was a great conversation, I'm gonna play for it in a second. He basically says that his health care funding plan will buy, provide budget stability. He doesn't look at the budget. We asked him, Rob asked him, I asked him, you know we wanna build two new schools? Oh no, I don't know that. Do you know how much the city budget is? No, I don't know that. I don't care. That's what he's so we also asked him, what's the what's in the best case scenario? How much are we going to have to pay annually on the debt interest for the schools? He said, I have no idea. They didn't provide me that information. Yeah, so everything's in, in the best case scenario. That will help. So the way he's coming from. Let me let me play this for you because this is a statement he made over a decade ago. And let me let me play this for you. And I want to get your reaction. <clears throat> we jump jump from fourteen point three million in two thousand thirteen for a contribution to 24.2 million in 2020. That's sustainable in, in your opinion, or you can't make that opinion because you don't know. Uh, you don't look at that. And you don't look at what we can afford to pay, correct? Correct. So if it's these two plans plus the other plans plus the health care is outside the maximum we can raise for taxes, that's that's not something you look at. You just tell us what we have to pay. Well, to answer the question directly, no, I do not look at that, or at least I do not worry about whether you make it afford or not. It's not my job or my charge to say whether the city can afford it or not. It's, it's to tell you what your plan costs. And I, and, you know, to be quite frank, if, if we can't raise taxes enough, to pay for what? Never mind the other obligations in the health care. What good is the promises that we make to our employees? So Mr. Newman to me is the kind of, that's what a lot of communities are running into. He's the kind of guy that you can go to and I can say everybody in this room wants to drive a Bentley, right? He could put a plan together that says how much it costs, how much per month you would have to pay. And he might come up, say it's 6,000 a month. 
He doesn't care that you can't pay your electric bill, you can't feed your family, you can't pay your mortgage. That's not, he doesn't have to worry about that. If you want to own a Bentley, it's going to cost this much money. That's what he's telling us. Right? I mean, I, I just want to, anybody want to react to that? What's your reaction when you hear this expert who recommended us doing this saying in his own words, I don't worry about whether you can afford it? What are you thinking? Takes the sea out of consultant. Yeah. What was uh, that? Hire another guy. Right? A girl. How well, can you, this, city, this is the best and brightest. How can I, you, I, I think it falls back to the mayor and the city council not doing their due diligence. They should be asking these questions. They shouldn't be up to the community. They should be up to the city. They should be up to the mayor. He was actually charged with the wrong question. Right. And you don't ask someone. Well, one of the things I did ask Mr. Newton last month when he was here presenting his plan, I said, Mr. Newton, if, if we came to you and asked your firm to develop a plan to, to build two new high schools for $350 million, to, to save $200 million to repair the water and the sewer lines in the city, right? To meet all our operating expenses. The guy's a number cruncher. He can do that. The city could hire him. He, he's a hired gun. He's just going to do what they pay him to do, right? They said, give us a plan. He gave us a plan. They didn't say, look at the budget. They didn't say, look at the new high school. You could. If Council President McAllister or Mayor Cozy want to do that, they can give him everything to do. Why won't they do that? Not in their interest. Because it would be the, the money that it would take would be catastrophic. It's why they won't go find their forecast, right? Because they don't want the taxpayers to know that it's, it would cost us so much money we couldn't afford to do it. So what do they do? Well, we could build two of these high schools at 350, right? Now, now Rob's going to talk about this. Well, now we got to cut this building out, this field out, this that. They're misleading us all the way around with this stuff. So the other thing that I did too, because Neil Dupris is the uh, city tax assessor. So last month, if you're not aware of this, what they're coming up with, um, you're probably all aware we delayed the rebound last year, right? And why did we delay the rebound? Because they said the housing prices are going to come down, right? You know, it's an unusual market. Well, they're not. So they misled us at that. That was an election year last year. That's the perfect time to delay a rebound because you don't want to get everybody pissed off because your house is going through and your taxes are going up, right? And what would have happened is probably the residential houses in the two, three, four hundred thousand dollar range were going to get slammed, so they delayed it. So they're thinking about delaying it again. Well, they didn't delay it then this time. You know what they did? They came up with something different. They're going to start changing the ratio of how much you can charge small businesses or residential. Right now for this year, what they want to do is try to keep, when the rebound comes out, you're probably going to get a sticker shot to see how much your house is worth, right? What they're going to do is they're going to change the rate around, try to keep everything about even, but they're going to change the rate so the small business people are paying more. And what's going to happen when all this other stuff hits, residential taxes are going to go up, and the small businesses are going to get slammed. And, you know, maybe the Walmarts and the Home Depots and the Lowe's, they're the big spots so they can afford that. But what's going to happen when you go to, you know, Governor Francis Inn for a dinner or, or to Cozy Grill for breakfast? They're going to have to pass that cost on to us, right? Because they're going to be getting slammed. So what I decided to do, because Neil <coughs> basically based his premise around changing the rates on Massachusetts communities, I started looking at Massachusetts communities. And I looked at Framingham, Massachusetts, and I wanted to see what was similar. Population is pretty close to war. I think we're like 80, 82,000 this in the 70s. Their annual budget is about the same as Warwick. They use the same auditing company. I don't know auditing company I just talked about. They use the same one as us. And their unfunded health care liability <coughs> is just about the same as Warwick's. They're about 400 million. So when I, excuse me, when I looked at this, they also have set up one of these healthcare trust funds. So this is the perfect community to take a look at it and see what they're doing. So what I discovered was like startling. I, I couldn't even believe it. And that's why I want to let you know today. So we already talked about Warwick wants to require millions more dollars, right? They want to put uh, $5 million into the fund. This is from Framingham, Massachusetts auditors. These are all same auditors. What they're basically saying is that, and they have about $10 million or so in this trust fund. I'm going to digress a little bit in a second. But what they're saying is the money that Framingham has in this trust fund right now isn't adequate enough to reduce your unfunded liabilities. Let me, i, I got to digress and i got to talk about this for a second. We have $400 million in unfunded liability, right? 
When you create a trust fund, it's like when you create a pension fund. You stop funding that. The federal government lets you discount or reduce the unfunded liability on paper. So what Warwick is trying to do, and, and Mr. Schaefer, who's the finance director, is trying to do, like, he said this two years ago, we got to get our finance, financial books in, all, in, in order. I said, what do you mean by that? What do you mean we got to put them in order? What he's saying is that they want to put a little bit of money into this trust fund. <clears throat> And it's going to allow them to knock off a million, a hundred million to two hundred million right off the books. And this is the perfect analogy I have. Let's think about: say you owe four hundred thousand dollars, right? You got a mortgage, you got you know student loans, car loan. Some shyster comes over to you and says, "You know what? You put two thousand five hundred dollars in this special savings account. We can knock off two hundred thousand dollars off your credit report." That's what they're doing. But you still owe four hundred thousand. You're still going to make the monthly payments. So why would Warwick want to try to clean up some unfunded liabilities? Anybody want to answer that? Why would we want to clean up more money? Absolutely. Why do we want to borrow more money? Because we're building two new schools. Because we're building two new schools, right? Yes. And what this is saying here, the auditors are coming in and saying, you know, based on these assumptions, this is this is framing it. The OPEB's net position was projected to be insufficient to make the projected benefit payment. So they can't use the higher rate. So what does that mean for Warwick? It means we're gonna have to put in millions of more dollars in this fund to make this thing work. And you know what Newton said? Rob, you can back me up on this. Newton said, this is his opinion, I think, five million dollars will be sufficient. He said, this will meet a stress test. How does he know that? These are the city auditors. They're the same city auditors that Warwick has. It's not working in Framingham, and they got over $10 million in their account. You think $5 million is going to work in Warwick? No, and if it doesn't work, what are we going to have to do? Put more millions in? So these are the kinds of things that the city officials should have been looking at. They should have got an opinion from this firm, but I'm telling you, very soon you're going to see on the docket for the city council, they're going to docket this legislation to get this thing undergoing and stop funding it. Um, and that's why I'm asking this question here. Has Mayor Pagosi and the City Council performed a due diligence regarding funding this trust fund and even constructing schools? Zero. And Rob's going to come up in a few minutes and he's going to talk about everything that we went through last year and we said, you can't do this, right? You know, they, they listen to what they want to hear. They bring in a hired gun to tell them, and it looks good, it sounds good. You know, I don't think anybody on the City Council even understands half this stuff. If you ask, you know, the finance chair, you know, Tim Howell, he couldn't answer some of this stuff. Maximum tax, he said, right? $8.5 million annually. Retiree health care is going to cost, on average, $7.5 million in the next nine years. 13 to $19 million from old numbers for the new schools, right? Where are we going to get all this money from? We're going to bankrupt people in the city, people on fixed income. City and school operating expenditures. The, the schools are asking 10.5 million, six million from the city. That leaves, you know, uh, from from the local revenue. The city budget hasn't even come out. We have 7.5 structural deficit because we're using one-time money to pay our bills. It's all around. It's a disaster. And my prediction is this: I think we still got some of this. It's called opera money. Yeah. I forget what it's used for. American Rescue Plan, something. Yeah. I think Mayor Pagosi is going to still use some of that to try to continue to balance and play this game. <clears throat> and, and I'm thinking like within two or three years, if we start constructing these schools, that's when you know what's going to hit the fan. Bob, what was that? that why, where did they get off that in a, in a meeting saying that they made a posting or something that Warwick's uh, future fiscal uh, horizons are looking good and the budget, every, you know, financially we're on. We're not, are they just getting that from having the opportunity? I didn't see, I didn't see that. Maybe they asked to do it. post it on the <clears throat> You know, they, like I said, announcement about how the they only, all they only talk it. to the people that want to give them the news they want to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and then this is another. Why won't Mayor Pagosi and City Council tell us how much our tax will increase? You heard what Mr. <coughs> Saron said, right, eight years ago. Simple math. They can do that. They can tell you how much your taxes are involved with all these things happening. They won't. Here's the question here. On that point, right? So obviously, there's a lot of negligence involved here. Is there an element of fraud? If, like, if our, I, don't, I don't know. City if, officials if the voters want to elect stupid people right. and represent them in office, who's the fraud? Is it on the voters or is it on the stupid people in office? You know what I'm saying? But they are they are ignoring certain parts of their jobs, though, right? 
Yeah, I, I would say like, so. How do they not do this financial report? How do they get away with not? How do they not yeah. know what you no know? No one pays attention. I'm glad your people showed up over here, but just nobody paid attention. It's like an appraisal. A, a few years back, That's when they cut right. school sports, anybody remember when they cut school sports? Oh, yeah, the kids sure. stormed City Hall. We had 300 kids in the city council chambers. Guess what? So within within a week to two weeks, they, they got school sports back in. If you had 50 people come to a council meeting and just talk about this thing and get in their faces, things might change. You know, that's the thing. And, and that's why I'm here doing this, because that's what I'm asking you. So my final point here with the slide. City leaders were misleading taxpayers, right? High school construction, unestimated, right? The recommendations, and Rob's going to talk about this in a second. I'm not going to even get into that. We, they, the reason they delayed the property rebound wasn't true. Right? <coughs> They're changing the classification of small business. They're all playing games here. You know, they want to make infrastructure repairs, and they say they're $5 million and they're $15 million, right? They're not even honest with us about how much infrastructure is going to cost us, right? The, the retiree health care plan is recommended by one person who admits he doesn't look at any of the expenditures in the city and the school. Is, is this guy really qualified to come up and recommend this plan, right? And then he doesn't examine or discuss what our financial advisors, even what our pension allocations are. He publicly justified it's not his job, right? It's not his job. He doesn't care. If you want to buy that Bentley, I'll tell you how much you have to pay at a monthly cost. If you can't live in your house and you can't pay your electric bill and feed your kids, that's not my problem. That's what he's saying. And the city is just falling for it. And what I'm saying, it's time. We have to demand proper vetting of all these new proposals. Oh, and if we don't, you know, we're going to suffer the consequences. So what's next? What's next is that the city council is going to be preparing, and it's not on this agenda for, for, for next week. I think the city is going to be, uh, Council President McCallis has docketed an ordinance, an ordinance is a law in the city, to stop implementing this plan. We need to have people, when that comes up, to go testify, it'll probably be in a finance committee meeting, against this proposal, and bring some of these things up. Barry, thank God, is live streaming this. I couldn't get it going, but I mean, at least we have the slides. I'm going to post these slides on my taxpayer spin. So you can look at it. But it will be great to throw these things up in their faces to say, you know, why didn't you look at this? Why didn't you look at what the consultant said eight years ago? See what they say. They'll probably ignore you. I mean, they, 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 you know, they got City Hall on lockdown. And then we got the budget hearings soon at the end of May. So, I mean, to me, it's, it's all going to be a part of you staying informed, you know, about the school construction and things like that. And we do really need people getting involved. They don't listen to Rob and I. They just think we're pains in the asses. We lie about everything. That's what they say. They, um, they've actually put ordinances in to prevent us from speaking. Yeah, they, they limit they limit your speech. You know when you know when, when Rob and I try to get up and say things, and things, they do everything possible to try to shut you down. I've seen them be so downright rude to him; it's unbelievable. You know, at, at council meetings. So that that concludes my presentation. Let me just. Well, they're upset with me because I found out that the fire department stole one point six million dollars. Yeah. So upset with me. You know, I'm the bad guy for sure. So, Sister Mary, third yeah, they showed me out the basic math. So, so before before I, I turn it over, up, anybody have any quick questions? I can take a minute or two. All right, just a quick one. So, when you talk about there's a max tax interest rate, how are they going to make up the difference? Can they change? They, that? they can go. They can supersede the max tax increase and get more from you. Supplemental. They're going to go to the general assembly, and that's exactly. what might happen with the school bonds. Who votes school, on that? Oh, the city council? Yeah, that's it. The city council will send a resolution up to the general assembly and say, we need more money, we want to go over the limit. So they say the max is 8 9, but we, we're going to need. Oh, yeah. Well, well, well if, the, if the school bonds are between 13 and 19, just think about that for a second. The borrowing cost just for those schools is going to be between 13 and 19 million. Say, that, say our regular you know, operating expenses are increasing $6 million a year. You could need $19 million a year. That's a two and a half. Maximum tax increase. So that's what I'm saying. We we got problems here. Well, like they're counting on other revenue from new business and all the people are going to move in because they've got new schools, <coughs> but that's not going to make up the difference. Not this so because it's not just we, they don't just raise money from no, no. businesses going out and business coming and, in. And, and anybody, who, who was down. that my presentation about? We did that War Affordable School Act and everything like that. Was anybody here on that one? What what did I talk about? How we could pay for the schools if they reform the health care costs? And some of the benefits, right? Take some of that savings. If you put a 30% copay on, on your retirees, you could save three, four, five million in a year. You know what I'm saying? But they're not the willing to there. do that. They, they've already made their point. They ignored their consultant to make the reforms, right? 
you're going to pay for it. That's what they're saying. You know, so that's all I have. And then I think let Rob go into now. You talk about the school construction. Yeah, sorry. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, one quick question. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, I know the city's already like a billion in debt, right? Yeah. Like maybe a little bit more. Um, to me, in my non expert opinion, you know, I wish I was a city consultant because it seems like a really good gig. Um, what do you think is the right step? I think they, it sounds like they need to declare bankruptcy or whatever the new, you know, municipal equivalent is. Why? Well, to go into receivership. That, Rob in and 2019, I, we had a, planners. we had a meeting at the Royal Public Library. There was over a hundred people, right. standing room only, they were calling people up. We have sent all the city finances to uh, Judge Flanders, yep. right, Bob Flanders. He looked at him for two weeks. He came, we made a I made a presentation, Bob did, Ken Block did. And Judge Flanders made a presentation and he said there was no mathematical formula where Lawrence could avoid insolvency. Right. But somehow he could but, and, 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 but here's the problem. Providence is worse. We're right behind Providence, yeah. but Providence school system gets funded by the city. No one's coming in and bail out Warren. You're not gonna get increased federal funds, you're not gonna get a lot of increased state funds. It's gonna be all dumped onto the tax base. So, you know, the thing that we could do is, you know, elect Maybe someone in the front office who could balance a checkbook. You know, maybe we could uh, uh, elect some city council people who take this stuff seriously. You know, I mean, that's the thing we got to do. The 2024 election is going to be so critical. The mayor is going to be for four terms, four years. It's a four year term. So, you know, so. Did you uh, plan to say that of the five checkpoints that say turn it over to the state? You had to have three. three. We had four of them, I think, yeah. at the time. You had to have three. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, you had to have two. We had three. Yeah, okay. One more yeah, but the city has to be also willing to ask for the help. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe someone should run for mayor with the fact I'm bringing us into receivership. I mean, maybe when all the taxes start going through the roof, you might win. So, all right. So, I, I, I just, I just wanted to problem. bring up a couple points. I wanted to okay. reiterate. How yeah, my house will fall off. Okay, the, thanks. The proposed debt. Um, but first, I, I want everybody to know that I invited all the city council members. Sent them a very nice invitation. Where are they? No one showed up. Councilman McAllister is unable to answer questions on the budget. He's unable to answer questions when there's contract negotiations. Um, we just had the contract negotiation with the fire department. The basic question that I asked him, what schedules the our fire department on, he wouldn't answer. He, he, he diverts every question to somebody else. Three years ago when I kept asking him questions, he put his head down and said, I'm here to listen. He has never had a job in the private sector. He's not a businessman, he's not a finance man. Uh, Tim Howell, same situation. These people are gonna ruin our community and it's evident every day. But I wanted to show you, uh, just to reiterate very quickly what happened with these schools. So on February 7th, there was a, uh, a school, there was a city council meeting, which was basically a Zoom meeting, where the school department came and they gave a 10 minute presentation, I'm gonna build these two, two new schools and it's gonna be wonderful. And at that point, the city council had to vote to move the stage two application to ride, right? And actually, the city council, they voted for it, although they did not have possession of the stage two documents because they weren't even complete. So, well, how do I know that? Well, during that meeting, the city council promised, because I, I, I asked a couple questions, they said, we're gonna have multiple meetings throughout the community and every ward, and we're going to educate the residents on the building of the schools and so, you know, everything about the finances. That bothered me a little bit. So the next day I got on the phone and I contacted Mario Carino from Ride. He's the, he's the assistant director of Ride. And I said, well, you know, they voted on this last night. And he said, how could they vote on it last night? He said, that application isn't even complete yet. I said, what do you mean it's not complete? He said, it won't be complete until around February 20th. They voted on a doc, they voted on documents that they never read. And I can show you emails from five of the city council members that said we haven't seen any documents. So what happened? Bob Cushman puts in a request for public records. And in fact, in March, I believe it was March 11th, we got contacted from the school department, hey, you can come pick up the thumb drive. So I went up and picked up the thumb drive, copied it, and Bob and I started looking at it. And uh, by page six, we found $75 million worth of mathematical errors. All right, so I'm gonna show you some, these are official documents from the stage two application. So the original stage two application was 2,000 pages. 
Bob and I went through every single page. Shows you what a life we have, right? I could have been on my boat. I could have been offshore fishing. I could have been flying the airplane. I sat and I looked at this nonsense. So, how do they make a $75 million error? This is their projection, okay, from the stage two documents. The, com the combination of the two schools plus the renovation of the CTC building, here you have it, you guys see that? $350 million. That's the total bond fund that's required, $350 million. So then in the stage two application, and this was also in, this document was also, this one document was in Peter Schaefer's explanation to the city council on February 7th, showing, okay, here's how much we're gonna have to pay, and the whole payback with the debt service is $450 million, and these are our numbers. Can anybody see something wrong with that? How much are we going to borrow? 350. How much did they amortize the schedule of interest to? 300. So that's a $50 million error. And then when they revise that, the juice on the $50 million, it's $75 million. So this was as of March. So naturally, I see that. I go on the air, I go on the radio, I start screaming and yelling. And as of April to July, Bob Cushman and I held several public meetings and we illustrated these errors that we found. On August 1st, the school department submits a supplemental document to correct their financial projection errors because we humiliated them. They had on August 1st, they had a meeting at the Crown Plaza. We went there and we got the new, the, the new, um, uh, the new supplement, right? So contained within that new supplement, what we find is the undisclosed figure that we forgot to tell you that there's a one-time fee to borrow the bond that's $11.7 million. That's what they tell us, right? Well, here is what they did. They corrected the amortization schedule. So now it's amortized to 350 million. It wasn't 450 million, the total payback. It's 525 million. But the superintendent of the schools kept telling everybody, it's like buying one and getting one free. Buy, yeah, if you forget, you have to pay the interest on it. Those are official documents. And Rob, those are interest rates from what, last year? Those are interest rates from last year. Yeah. Everybody knows what's happening, yeah. right? Now, contained within the supplement was a page that nobody saw, city council didn't see, as of today, they still haven't gone through the supplement, and it shows that the bond proceeds, right, our fee is $11.6 million, $11.7 million. So the total bond indebtedness is $361 million. And, and Rob, there's no reimbursement on that no 11. No reimbursement. By the way, the school department doesn't pay that. That money does not come out of the bond. That money has to come out of the general fund of the city of Wark one time. And what, what's the maximum tax increase? Maximum tax increase is 8.5, 8.6 million. So add that to everything else we're talking so about. <laughs> This eleven point seven million to the seventy five million, the eighty six million dollars. That's their errors, and you got you know, Peter Schaefer, the finance guy from the city of Warwick, saying everything's perfect. They didn't find these errors. Again, back to the term, simple mathematics. Nobody looked at this. So what did they do? After they got tortured, in June the city vote, the city council votes uh, to put the school oh, construction God. ballot. To, to put the school construction on the ballot for the voters to approve. As of June 22nd, and I can show you emails from the city council members, they still did not get the thumb drive. They still had not received any of the stage two documents. They still did not read them, and they still had not held any of the meetings that we promised on February 7th. You can see that all this online, there was Anthony Sinapi, Quote unquote, Rod doesn't give a shit about the city of Wall. In fact, what his quote was at a council meeting, and he said, We're going to have multiple meetings in all the wards to educate the people. They didn't have any. You know, you know who had meetings? Bob Cushman and myself. From July through November, the school department holds meetings to promote school construction. They had one at the uh, Pilgrim School, one at the Tollgate School, one at the Crown Plaza. And the superintendent continued to state, if we, if we build one, it's like getting one free. The, city, the school department then solicited $36,000 from three or four different parties that all had a vested interest in pushing this bond forward for construction. 
And then they went on, they had this vote for kids. If you remember, they set the signs all over vote for kids. That was the, on the ballot <clears throat> question. Well, in doing that, they violated state and city laws. None of those signs by law could be on school property, on any city property or state property. They didn't register at the time to, to solicit those funds. They had a bogus address for the law firm that was the head of it. I went there, knocked on the door, went in. Nobody knew what was going on. And today, in November, no meetings held by the city council. It goes on the ballot, and the, and we lost, right? Chanel, this, this young lady over here went on to Floyd. She delivered 2,500 flyers door to door mm -hmm. with information about the school bonds. Myself, Cindy Wilson delivered a couple of thousand, right? We reached at least 5,000. The ballot passed 58 to 42. The 42 percent against was the highest against a ballot referendum ever, right? Only but only 36 percent of the people were voted. So when you do that math, 21.6 percent of the residents of Ward voted to indebt you 525 million dollars. That's a problem in the community. The people aren't paying attention, right? So, where do we go from there? November 2022, the school department requests, so I'm out there screaming and yelling, right? I build schools for a living. I've been on doing school construction from kindergarten, K through 12, university. I've worked in all the major projects. I, I can't tell you how many meetings I've had with board of directors, um, it doesn't work. It's simple math, right? They promised us 503,000 square feet of school space with indoor, indoor walking tracks for senior citizens and fields and all, and all these beautiful amenities, right? They promised that we're going to build the Taj Mahal, but they have the budget to go to the New York system and only going to get two wings <laughs> with no hundreds. And so what they did was, after it got out, they're not going to say Rob Cody and Bob Cushman were correct, all right? I supplied them all. I, I buried them with information from construction projects. Now they get egg on their face. They say, oh, you know what? We have to do another peer review. So they go out and they do another peer review with the architects, engineers, whoever. And they come back. They did this in November. Dave Tester from the school committee chair. He's the school committee chair. The review was completed in January. Where is it? He's hidden it. He's hidden it. Last week, like two days before the budget hearings for the school, he gave three pages of it to the school committee members and said, do not give these to anybody. Why? Why don't you, look, if everything that I say is a bunch of bull, why don't you take your documents, publicly humiliate me for once and for all so I go away, show that I'm wrong, and be done with it? Why are they hiding those documents? The reason they're hiding those documents is because the documents clearly show that the schools cannot be built as it was sold to the voters, right? McAllister said, not a penny more than 350 million. It's already 361.7 because you, you can't ignore the fact that you have a debit because you have to pay the bonding fee, right? So it's already there. So what they're doing now, and all the school projects that I'm involved in, I just finished a big one in, in Worcester, that it was originally sold to the voters for 246 million, then it went to 293 million, then 297. Now it's over 350 million. In the time of the constructability of that school, uh, conduit alone, these pipes up here, right, went up. Eight million dollars cost overruns just on conduit. We were spending two thousand dollars a day just on boomers. They 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 um, they scheduled they they budgeted 150 thousand dollars for temporary heat through the winter. We were using $24,000 a week in temporary heat, right? The cost of steel. Right now, steel is about $5,000 a ton fabricated for simple steel. That's not steel that has spandle beams that have lentil systems and brick shelves. That can be up to $10,000 a ton, right? Their numbers are so far off, it isn't even funny. And by the way, on this peer review, they never consulted the engineers of record. How I know that? Because I know them, they're one of my clients. They never consulted them. So, at the end of this, we were sold the product, right? They lied to us, they didn't do the homework, they didn't present the facts, the city council never vetted any of their numbers, they wouldn't listen to anybody in the field that does this for a living, 
And the end result, it's going to cost us more. What they're going to do now, they're shrinking the footprint of these buildings, they're taking away amenities, right? And they still want to build two schools. I can tell you this at Tollgate. Tollgate, what, what happens when they build schools, and I've been doing this a long, long time, we build a new school on the existing playing fields, right? And then when the school is complete, we knock down the old school and we rebuild the playing fields. I said that six years ago in the city council meeting and Don and Travis on a live mic called me up table, yeah. on a live mic. Well, that's what they do. So it's a square footage thing. Typically, it's number of students times 200 square feet per student. At the time, it was $350 a square feet plus a square foot for construction. Now it's 700. So let's just do the math. The building I just finished was 500, uh, 420,000 square feet. It's $350 million. That one building, 420,000 square feet. They proposed to us 503,000 square feet. Three fifty. Right? For 350? There is no possible way it's going to happen. No possible way. On two locations, that's a two locations. Now you're going to remember at Tollgate. Tollgate is all ledge. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I looked at their numbers for excavation. They had like two hundred fifty thousand dollars in for excavation. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the equipment to site for that. I was on the Waltham project. Waltham was the, the one with Waltham High School on ledge. Right. Yeah. You cannot believe the two massive mountains that they have for a year, cutting, drilling, and breaking up the ledge. Uh, the, the cost of that is astronomical. Factoring the cost of fuel for all that equipment. There's no possible way they're going to do this. So what are the alternatives? So in, in my opinion, um, you don't need two schools, number one. And the superintendent said it a couple of times. He said, well, this is really about equity and inclusion. We don't want to have the kids on this side of the city going to a brand new school and the kids on that side going to an old school. The hell with the taxpayers, the hell with the, you know, burdening, burdening us with, you know, uh, tax, exorbitant tax dollars that they know they're not going to be able to. So, my point is this. Bob's just showed you all the games, that the, the nefariousness, the chicanery that they play. Can they be trusted? 